But now we can say that those people who have been firing over the night, killing people, mm. I think those people have been defeated and most of them have been uh, disarmed. We've seen the day before yesterday that uh, three persons have been killed, uh, but we believe it, it was ahead of this delegation from the Security Council that is traveling to Burundi. Uh, you know, those persons, they tr always try to tarnish the image of Burundi to show that the Burundi is under fire. So they kill people in order to show the international community that in Burundi we are not at peace. But I can assure you that since December until now, Burundi is at peace. Who died? Who are those three that uh, were reportedly killed uh, the day before yesterday? Because uh, the information I have is that before we came to the studio, there are in fact three government officials who were killed near Bujumbura. Yeah, it was in Bujumbura. It was um, in, uh, in a bar. But those kind of attacks are similar to ter terrorist um, attack because mm. uh, when you go to kill innocent people, they, those are innocent people. They, they could be from the government, or, but they are innocent people. When people are going to their lives, no one has um, to go and, and kill them. This has to be addressed uh, seriously. But uh, even here in America, even in other countries of Africa, of Europe, we can see people who behave like this, who go and kill people blindly, but this is terrorism. It is true to a certain degree that, for example, you could go to some of the major American cities and uh, you find that the police has killed some people and what have you. But when you look at uh, the trajectory of Burundi, really, especially I am really surprised that uh, these killings seem to be confined or people who attack government authorities tend to come from specific areas like Ngagara, Nyakaviga, Musaga, Chibitoke, Mutakura and Jabe. Why? These are neighborhoods uh, that were in the streets during the violent riots um, of May and, and June 2015. Uh, and in those neighborhoods, we used to see people firing over the night uh, and killing people, throwing bodies in the street, uh, taking pictures, spreading them uh, on the internet, WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter, in order to show that the uh, Burundi government is killing its citizens. But uh, security forces have addressed seriously with this matter, uh, trying to disarm uh, those chaps and uh, for the time being I can assure you that um, most of all the weapons that they had have been uh, seized by the police. This is the reason why now we can see Burundi emerging from uh, those ashes and uh, the, the internal dynamics mm. uh, are beginning to shine again uh, when people are uh, going to their lives uh, at peace. Uh, but we cannot cross our, uh, 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 our hands and say, say that the uh, uh, situation came back to normal 100%. We are still coping um, with those persons who continue to kill innocent people. But uh, now the death toll, uh, thank God, has sensibly decreased. I see. Karin, of course, uh, uh, you are a patriotic Burundian citizen. You obviously have been following the developments in your country. How do you respond to what Gwede uh, Nyamitwe has just said? Um, thank you. Well, what I would like to say is that the facts uh, on the ground uh, contradict utterly uh, what Mr. Nyamitwe just said. Um, and I would like us to enlarge the conversation and include, uh, because we're talking about Bujumbura, but we, let's not forget that we have 235,000 people who have fled Burundi, who are in the sub-region. Um, as you know, for, um, for an African man or an African woman to leave his or her land, it must be serious. Mm. Land is a crucial, crucial issue in our country. Um, we, let's not forget the latest UN report that says that uh, uh, there have been at least nine mass graves 
which have been uncovered. Um, when, uh, when we talk about different neighborhoods uh, being uh, disarmed and, and, uh, and uh, a decrease of death toll, how then do you explain the, the, the increased number of rapes of women, for instance? Um, the, the report mentions gang rapes. Uh, with the, uh, with the, and one has to, 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 to say, to state, with an undertone uh, of ethnicity. Uh, uh, what's going on in Burundi is not What do you mean when a, you say with an undertone of ethnicity? Because, because uh, I, I my understanding of the politics of your country is that, right. in fact, you have both primary stakeholders, especially Tutsi and Hutu, on both sides of the aisle. Absolutely. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. But that does not take away the fact that right now, as we speak, women who have been victims of rape have stated themselves, and who are we to, uh, to say that it's not true what they said, that every time they were taken by force, they were told, insulted, that they were taken because, one, they were Tutsis, or because they, men, brothers, or whoever, were fighting the government. And rape being used as a, as a, as a weapon, as a, as, a, as, a terror, as a terror tactic, is absolutely uh, unacceptable. And it, it, as we know, it has been uh, uh, recognized uh, as a crime against, uh, under international law. Mm. Now, that's one, that's one issue. But I, I would like to also state something. Uh, we say that Burundian, the Burundi crisis is a political crisis. But at the heart of it, at the heart of it, it's a crisis of ethics. And that's, I think, very important uh, to note. Um, when you look at where we came from and where we are right now, three things have to be, uh, to be, to be uh, stated. The first one, the inability of the political elite to actually articulate a vision of a new society where uh, the minority, those who don't want the, 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 the president to go for a third term, those who are part and parcel of the government feel that they, are, they belong to the same country. The second issue, it's what I call the politics of Sanduku, the briefcase, where the state becomes a, a, a briefcase full of goodies, mm -hmm. where everybody from the political elite is trying to actually grab it, those goodies and they forget their people in the, in, the, in, the, in the process. And then we have the third, the third issue, which is very important, which is linked to those two points. It's a breakdown of morals and values. Well, and what happens, mm. I'm sorry, I'm just going to finish. What happens is that we have a cavalier attitude from our, from our political elite towards people who are dying, towards those who are, for instance, and I'm sure you've heard, that people are not even allowed to bury their, their loved ones. This is. Can you imagine? We'll come, we'll come back then, to that um, more later because uh, time happens not to really be our best yeah. ally. There's no democracy in 52. When the producer tells you to go for a break, you have to go, like a very loyal soldier. Now, we'll pause for a short break and would like to remind you that Straight Talk Africa is now on the social networking website, Twitter, and we are tweeting live. Follow us at VOA Shaka. That's VOA Shaka and join in on today's discussion with your questions and comments. Don't forget to use the hashtag, and we are still on Facebook. Just enter the keyword, Straight Talk Africa, become a fan and connect with other friends of the Voice of America. We'll be right back with you, so please, don't go away. Jean Minani, the exiled leader of the Opposition Front for Democracy in Burundi, says efforts toward a peaceful resolution of the Burundian crisis are not dead because the Burundian people want peace. He says if President Kurunziza's government doesn't want to negotiate, they will be forced into negotiations by the will of the people. Violence in Burundi is sparked by row over president's third term. Burundi's ethnically fueled civil war ended in 2005. World frets about new ethnic conflict in the volatile region, and government denies trying to exploit ethnic rifts. Like Voice of America on Facebook. Follow VOA on Twitter. 
Twitter. Join VOA on our YouTube channel. Like, follow, join VOA. This is Straight Talk Africa on The Voice of America. What is your opinion about today's topic? Call us at 202-619-3111. U.S. country code 1. When you call, remember the following. Ask only one question, keep your comment brief, and turn down the volume on your radio or television. Now let's return to Straight Talk Africa. Thank you very much. I thank you, you word. And of course, this is Straight Talk Africa coming to you live from Washington. Uh, I have to apologize to you, Karin, uh, because I really had to interject. Mm -hmm. uh, like I, tell, I, told, I said, uh, there's no democracy in Studio 52. When the producer says you go, you have to go. So I hope you'll find <laughs> right. some space in your beautiful Burundian hat. Forgive me for that. That's okay. Could you complete your point? You have 30 seconds. The breakdown of morals, uh, which for me is at the, at the center of this crisis, where we have a cavalier attitude, we become death worshippers. People die today, December 11th, the following day, people are celebrating. We become celebrators of death. And um, what I would like to, to, to add to that is that we have become uh, what we didn't want to be maybe 15 years ago. Mm. And that is linked to the whole issue of seeing the state